Hello and welcome to another episode of the Paper Stack Podcast. We are here with Alex Graba at the Note Expo yep. 2023. And we're doing another one in the series for the My First Note. So he, his story's a little different because Alex doesn't buy them, he creates them. He's, yeah. the, he's the Note creator. So this uh, kind of goes hand in hand with what we did with the Nick Laguermo. He's kind of the yep. kind of yep. same type of stuff, but he does, he, he does it on single family, but you do it on land. And so I want to know kind of, how was your first? How'd you get, how'd you even come to create a note? And then second, like if you're creating a land note, what are the things that you want to know, like you sure. know, to, to set it up correctly? And, and then also too, he's one of our, our big sellers on the site. So this, he's got the land notes, who's going to describe what he's creating. And then also how he's actually selling these on the site. So if you're seeing this episode, you can find his notes on the actual platform. So yep. yeah, let's go. So uh, short version uh, of how I got started. So I ended up, I was a house flipper. So I know Nick from the house oh, okay. too. So um, bottom line is I, I was a house flipper for a very long time and then later transitioned into land. And land, you know, is is uh, very, very, for me, and that's one of the things I'll speak about a little more later, but for me, a very safe w- way to get into creating notes. So one thing I didn't like about creating notes with houses was mm-hmm. the fact that when you take a house back, a lot of times there was, you have to remodel it all over again. And so as a flipper, I didn't want to go redo the house again. So I would just prefer to sell it outright and be done with it. So here, here with the, with the land, I didn't mind because I took the land. If I ever took the land back, all I had to do is go back out there, clean it up, mow it, and put it back out for sale. And uh, luckily, I've had you know a lot of success and haven't had to do much. I think we've only taken one back out of like 90 transactions. Wow, it's been really good. Yeah, the people we buy that buy from us are, are we tend to vet them pretty good, and that, I'll speak to that if you want me to. But ultimately, um, the first time I did a, a note was basically somebody showed up and says, "Hey, would you would you finance it?" And, uh, oh, the land? Yeah. Because you were just uh, buying I, the land I, I, and selling it. And I was flipping land. I was just buying and reselling the land, buying and reselling the land. And I needed my money back every time. And what's funny is I ended up, uh, I have a friend who, who all creates notes. So it's actually one of Nick's friends, too, uh, friends in common. Uh, long story short, they, they I talked to him. I said, hey, Mark, you know, the, I'm, this guy wants to buy the property from me. And, you know, the, house, the property, I'm selling it for 70 grand. And he said he's got like $30,000 down. He doesn't have the rest for you. I'm like, dude. <laughs> finance it that's the safest you know for sure thirty thirty thousand dollars is a big down payment and so he talked me through it connected me with some attorneys and that I do use attorneys for all the documents I would say that's one of the things that I would stress especially if you've never done one is go through an attorney to create draft your, your documents and once you have them then you could you know use those as a boilerplate but I, my documents were created by attorneys up front when, then, when was that what year was that uh, man, it was COVID. Wow. Now, before that, I was doing houses, and the house market crashed. Right. When COVID happened, we all thought the world was going to end. And right. So I got out of the houses as fast as I could, and so, and I ended up having a few that I ended up selling afterwards. But I was like, man, I got to pivot. I got to get into something. And so my friend that was doing land, he was still selling, and and so that's like, you know, I got into land through that, and uh, I had success. I mean, another thing too is, you know, understanding the market. So. I am my own pro- uh, I am a consumer of my own product. So I'm, you know, for me it's real easy to sell the land because I am, I, I, I want, I live on two acres. I have horses, I have a construction company or had a construction company. And so the, what I sell is, you know, two, two to five acre tracks with no restrictions. So you can put a house, you can put your shop in the back or barn, you can put, you know, horses, cattle. We're in Texas, so a lot of my houses, cattle's a normal thing down here, right? Yeah. Cows and chickens. So, that's, I was a consumer of the product, so I knew, understood it, I knew how to sell it, and so it was real easy. The challenge was, you know, banks don't do a lot of financing for land, so that's where mm. also seller financing got really interesting. My biggest fear was selling the note. Oh, yeah? Yeah, selling the note, and so when I came across Paperstack, I was like, well, let me give these guys a shot. I had sold notes, a few notes, so before I went on Paperstack, I sold a few notes through private investors, and, uh, and, and that works, still works. Um, but I need a little more velocity because, you know, we were, I think we, we did about, we were looking last night, I think I did 30, 30 deals a, a year ago. And so I needed more velocity. My, my, my private lenders or private investors couldn't consume that product at that rate. Yeah, yeah. And so that's when I tried, you know, paper stack. I came across it. I think it was on Facebook. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a podcast just like this or you and you and Rick talking. And so it's like, well, let me give these guys a shot. And so I put it up there and man, it was, it was easy putting it up there. I mean. 
it, it was a little bit of a learning curve, but I think if you're pretty techie, you can figure it out. And at the end of the day, if you know if you know about notes and you know what the questions are and you know where to get the answers to it, you know, you just upload your your, your note and bring it to the races, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I remember I, when I before I knew you, I, I was I'd see them come across and like this guy's selling everything. You he sold, sold everything. I've got everything sold, yeah. So one of the things about it is I learned, you know, and we were talking about this last night. In my ignorance, I went to YouTube University, right? So um, because the product that I was creating was different than every other house seller. And so the land the land was a little bit different. And kind of I was on an island where I didn't really have a whole lot of people that, that did that. So I he went to YouTube University and learned a little bit of uh how to do it and one of the things that set you know resonates to me is the 10 10 10 10, 10 year note 10 uh -huh. interest with 10 percent down and so that's what i started creating a lot of and so that was really consumable by, by you know people on paper stack Interesting. Clients, buyers and paper stack. so that's what i started with um, i still do some of that i've changed the 30-year notes just because a lot of times my, the price point has gone up. So if I have a 10 year note instead of a 30 year note, it'd be too expensive for the borrower. So now I'm setting them up for fail. And another thing is we use RMLO. Yeah. So we qualify them. So the DTI, the debt to income. And oh, so, that has to work. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, to create good paper, that's yes, you know, we sell everything, but it's because we create really, really good paper. Yeah. We our, our, our borrowers always bring a minimum 10% down, if not more. We make sure they go through an RMLO, which we don't have to as a land seller. We don't have to go through that. Um, but I want to know that they can borrow, I mean, that, that they can that they can afford it and then they're going to pay. And it's not so much for me. I mean, realistically, I'll take the property back. I don't have a problem with that. The land, nothing happens to me. If I took a property back, I mean, like I said, I just got to go out there and get it cleaned up and put it back out on the market and reload it. If I had a house, I'd be a little more worried. But right. on, on land, I have no issues. But I don't want them to fail. Yeah, yeah. And so that also means like I'm really happy with keeping the notes I have. I put them up for sale, and as they sell, I make more. You know, create more. But more. at the end of the day, I, you know, I, I'm again a consumer of the product. I'm creating the paper that I would want to hold on to. That's interesting. Eventually, I want to get to the point where I don't sell the notes, right? I mean, that's the goal every world, and that's how you get out of the rat race. Is Right. Keep, keep as much as I can create, but I'm not in that place. I, I do it now to recapitalize and go out and buy more land. Interesting. And so we do RMLO, we do uh, BPOs on every property. So, you know, I, third party BPOs. So that way the, the note buyer knows the value of the property by someone other than just what I think, right? And, and of course, this estimate, we, there's a estimate on the platform, but I think it's a little more. It gives it a little more validity, right? Yeah. It's not that it's better or worse. It's just more validity having a third party. And so we always get a, a, a VPO. Um, we get surveys on every property. We use a title company for every property. We have lender's insurance on every property. Wow. transfers over. So that's what I think has given us a lot of success on Paperstack is, is to be able sense. to uh, you know, create really, really good paper. Deeds of trust. So, so, I mean, so we're in a deed of trust state. Yep, yeah. we're in Texas. So it's a deed of trust and everything's filed. I mean, we have no, we don't do contract service. service. So we use a third party servicer. That's another thing. So we yeah. use a third party servicer and we get, you know, uh, payment history. So we use a payment history uploaded to. Um, yeah, so that, would, that's, that sounds like a, I mean, that's why you sell, that's why you sell something. Yeah. And, and you know, a little pet peeve that I have and just kind of say it out loud is when you're, uh, if you're a buyer of notes and you're on the platform, other than just going into the, the actual listing itself and then maybe reaching out to us or to me, you don't know the difference between my note and someone else's. Right. And so... I think that's where, you know, if you if you look at the notes and go into them and say, hey, this guy put six files up and, and he's got all the BPO here and he's got a payment history, as opposed to someone that just puts, I got this note for sale and there's no documents uploaded. Like, I'm not saying there's red flags, but I'm saying like, I want to make it easy for you to consume, right? Like, like a CarMax model. Like, look, here's what I want to buy. Here's what I want to sell it for. That's another thing too. I try to give a good yield to the buyer. I mean, that's the buyer. So I think, you know, depending on the property and depending on the, the payment. So if, they, if it's a three month seasoning, if I had a two year seasoning, it'd be different price. Right. But, you know, we try to give a yield that's attractive to the note buyer. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So for those listening that don't know what an RMLO is, it's a registered mortgage loan officer. Originator. Yeah, origi origi oh, is it originator? Yeah, it's origi <laughs> oh, so it was an officer. Yeah. It's, originator. It's, yeah. So they basically set up the paper so it looks like it's written by legit like it's, it's well it's basically they they're, they're the same people that can underwrite loans for hud yeah or fannie mae or freddie mac yeah yeah so it's it's good stuff 
Interesting. Okay, cool, man. So that's uh, that's good to know. That's now that, that's uh, opens my eyes as to why everything sells. Uh, so if you're uh, so a lot of these people people watching are new to the space. If you see, you sound like you've been in real estate for a long time. So if you have one piece of advice for somebody that's new looking to get in the note space, maybe buy or create. What, what would you say if you were starting from square one, do this Into first? the notes, buying yeah. notes? Man, so obviously it's a biased answer, but it's not. It's also a very, very real one. Land is a very safe investment because if you're buying a, a note on a house and God forbid you have to take it back. Yeah. Unless you've been around that and realize it because having been remodeling houses, they'll, they'll come in. I mean, sometimes these people are upset. They yeah. It's their home. And so they'll blast the house i mean they'll rip up carpet uh you know tell you horror stories right i've, I've heard cement down the, the the drain and all kinds of stuff because i saw that i'm like man i would never finance a house land man i finance you know, that's all i do i don't I, yeah. I sell everything on phone and financing now and the fear of well what happens if i take a property back because no one's really doing our finance well, yeah, on land. Dirt. I mean, they move very quickly, yeah. right? So, and, and then, you know, I mean, bottom line is, I, so if you're getting into notes, I think you should consider land as an a, a easy way to get into it. Because that. if you don't have a lot of money and you get into a house and the house goes bad and then they mess up the house, you're gonna have to remodel. You're gonna have to rehab the house. Might as well get into house flipping because that's exactly what you're gonna have to do. So that means my yeah, you know, yeah, easy transition sense. into it. I'll give you another one: partials. I mean, if you never sure, partials. So we sell partials, and so if you if you've never done a note, the beauty of having a partial is the primary note investors. Me, I want to keep the back end. So you know, you get you get to get all the benefits. There's a servicing company we set up in place. And I'm kind of watching over your shoulder the whole time because I want to make sure that the borrower's you know, in line so that I can get back end payments of that. Right. Uh, so it, it's not that I'm going to be your coach and I'm going to hold your hand, but I'm also going to just kind of be in the background making sure that the borrower doesn't go too far in default because if you if we foreclose or if you foreclose, it wipes me out. <laughs> so yeah. I'm very interested in making yeah. sure that that doesn't happen, right? That's very so true. that's, I think partial is another good way to get into the note business. That's also. Smart. It's cheaper, right? Yeah, Instead of buying a full note, it's by a partial note. It's, it's cheaper to get into it. So uh, that'd be my advice. That's good. Yeah, there was one time that we went to this one house. Rich asked me, he's like, do you want to see, um, let's go look, check out this house. It was lo local. And big house. Big house. I mean, like a huge house. And um, it, we rolled up and I was like, whoa, whoa what's going on here? They painted the outside, like, like just a nasty ass color just for because they're pissed. Yeah. And so, and then the windows were all black and I'm, we opened the front door and it, there was a pentagram on and candles and like, like pictures of kids. Oh, well, what the hell did we just walk into, right? <laughs> He's like, don't worry, this is all fake. I was like, how do you know it's fake? He's like, look at the candles. They've only been lit once. This is what people do. They made everything black and like they put, uh, like painted everything on the floor black and then they, they, put cement down the toilet down yeah. the jacuzzi that's what i mean and they did the worst part of like this house they they cut the trust like it's oh wow and then when we walk around the back i was like what was he planning on doing here they, they had like um gasoline tanks and uh they were they wanted to blow that place up, up. yeah so it, we could have got it for like still that it would have been like 600 but that house did sell and it sold for like a couple million. Yeah. But you know, what a pain in the butt that yeah. one. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, the bottom line, the, that same sentiment is on a $30,000 house. Yeah. That's I mean, they, it's, it, they, they feel powerless and that's the only way they have to release their feet or their, 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 their anger. Yeah, thank you. All right then, well, that one wraps up this one for Paper Sack Podcast for my first notes. Alex Brella. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. See you on the next one.